even the scientific theories, most of the theories we do not have the proof for. Mm -hmm. We are trying to gather that evidence. So we definitely have stories of the multiverse. Mm -hmm. We definitely have stories of similar titles Correct. being existing in the different universes. Right. Uh, whenever we're looking for life, we're always looking for a radio signal. You know, we'll believe aliens only if there's a radio signal, if we see a UFO <laughs> in the sky. Why? It could be an alien life which could be more primitive or it could be in a different form. So there is a lot of science embedded into our Shastras. That's why we call it Shastra, which yes. is the science part of it. Right. Now, but when we always say that uh, currently, and that's my verse, and you can actually say it's right or wrong, our science has not evolved that much to figure out what is happening. Do you think it's right or you think, no, Pavan, I think that we are too good, you know everything. Or like, What is your thought about how much science should learn from the scriptures? No, Pavanji, I think I, as I said in the beginning also, these are all theories, right? Even the scientific theories, most of the theories we do not have the proof for. Mm, yeah. We are trying to gather that evidence through all these telescopes and looking into the sky and, you know, uh, trying experiments and uh, uh, in uh, conditions that simulate the vacuum of the space, etc. But we do not understand uh, space. Okay. We, uh, if you if you see the exploration that has happened, actual exploration, even if it is mechanical, mm -hmm. uh, human beings have not gone beyond moon, <laughs> right? No. But even within our solar system, our mechanized robots, the robotic satellites, the voyagers, etc., they have not managed to. Uh, fathom the uh, depths of this solar system yeah, uh, completely. So, there have been observations, of course, centered around the uh, planets Correct. or the moons. Yeah. But solar system is much more. Yeah, right? I know. It's not yeah. just the planets. Correct. So, we have focused only on the planets. We don't even know what else is there. We, we do have an idea, but we have not, uh, you know, there's no evidence, evidence that we have gathered, yeah. real, evidence real evidence that we've gathered. It's based on scientific theories, which are sound. And it should be like the way it is described. But still, there is no proof, I would say. So uh, if, we, if we have that premise in the back of our mind, I would say there is a lot that science can learn from other streams, not just scriptures, from other streams. I think it's a great thing. And, and for the numbers you told, I think it just blew my mind. And imagine the magnanimity of where we are in. We think we are doing great and oh my God, Saal kaise guzra, we don't know. And we are talking about Saal, oh, billions of years yes. of one day of Brahma. And this is just one Brahma. One Brahma. One and universe. Have, one universe. <laughs> so on that universe, and um, I like this uh, director called Christopher Nolan, who actually dharmified the science. <laughs> and his movie, Tenet, if you have seen yes, it. Yes, yes, right? I have. It talks about seven multiverses. You're right. And they have decoded the movie. I saw it seven times and I had tried to understand. I think I understood. So each time for one universe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kind of trying to decode and I saw multiple YouTube videos to understand the movie. So he talks about the same person being there in multiple multiverses. Yes, yes. So is it uh, true in our dharmic sense also? So I would say, you know, we definitely have stories of the multiverse. Mm -hmm. We definitely have stories of similar titles. Correct. being existing in the different universes. Right. Uh, you know, uh, for example, there's a story about Brahmas, multiple Brahmas being there. Now, of course, it may not be the same Brahma that we have here. As I understand uh, from the scriptures, it's not the same person. It's not like the same person in a parallel universe. Ah, okay. It's a different person with a similar responsibility. Got it. There's this Karnodakshai Vishnu who's just lying in that material realm. And every time he exhales, there's a universe that pops out of his pores. Mm. So there's millions of universes coming out of Karnodakshai Vishnu's pores. Okay. Each of this universe again has a form of Vishnu inside it, which is the Karbhodakshai Vishnu, mm. from whom emerges Brahma for that universe. Okay. So each Brahma has the same task. You know, okay. he's the creator for that universe, but it's a different person. It's a different universe. Understood. So it's not exactly like a parallel uh, universe, okay. you know, but it's a it's a, a multiverse in the proper sense of the word. That you know, it's a different universe with its, its own different. It's running there separately. It's running separately, you know, with no connection with our universe. So there might be a doctor we need somewhere, a doctor <laughs> somewhere if... talking about to Pawan Valuri. <laughs> Uh, let's hope so. <laughs> let's hope we are doing the same thing there as well. We should, we should. <laughs> you know, if, if you just see how life behaves under the water, 
uh, in the depths of the oceans, you see life forms that you cannot imagine yeah. can exist. And similar life forms could be there on other planets, right? Yeah. Whenever we're looking for life, we're always looking for a radio signal. You know, we'll believe aliens only if there's a radio signal, if we see a UFO <laughs> in the sky. Why? It could be an alien life which could be more primitive or it could be in a different form or it could be least bothered with us, you know. They don't want to contact us, right? So I think there's a lot of scope in science. Okay. And scriptures do provide a lot of uh, food for thought, hmm. I would say. You know, I wouldn't say that everything that we read in the scriptures, again, because it cannot be corroborated. It's a matter of faith. We believe, yes, it is so. Yes. But again, we cannot get approved, just like our modern scientific theories. Correct. But a lot of food of food for thought can be gained from these scriptures. A lot of discussion. In fact, there are theories floating around that, you know, Hitler and all those people in World War used a lot of Sanskrit, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, scriptures to design Vimanas and etc., etc., which could be true. You never know. Yeah. Right? They were yeah. doing a lot of research. Germany... Uh, even today, Sanskrit is a very popular language in Germany. Germany, yes. So, um, there is a lot that we ourselves don't know about our scriptures. And uh, again, you know, Sanskrit language is one issue. Hardly, how many people in India today know Sanskrit? Yeah. Right? It's not a part of our curriculum in most states. It's it's a rarity to find somebody who's learned Sanskrit in school. You and know? that's why we are actually speaking in English, which right. is not our language. Exactly. But we need to go to many people in our country. Yes. That's why we're speaking in English. Yes, yes. And and I think there's so much more hidden in the scriptures that get that will get revealed. And fortunately with internet, it is getting revealed. Yeah. And more and more people are learning about these things that were hidden in the uh, texts, obscure texts somewhere <laughs> in some Himalayan monastery. You know, it's like the uh, Doctor Strange <laughs> movies you see, that. you know, in that, in that library. <laughs> these are all these texts hidden. But now I think internet is bringing out these texts. Yeah, I think that, that's that's a great revolution, I would say. Definitely. For, for I think it helped, science helped a lot yes. to get these scriptures out yes. and make it available. So and I'll now take an, yeah. science should gain from it. <laughs> should, yeah. <laughs> and it will gain. Yeah. I like chat GPT, for example. AI was there since 50 years. Yes. Nobody knew. Yeah. And now everybody's talking about it because it became consumed right. by easily. Now, if yeah. we can get our scriptures consumed very easily, yeah. I think I think that's what this is one of the um, you know model which we are trying to see, take scriptures. And what I personally believe and uh, is whether Rama existed, Krishna existed, we can figure out. But what can we learn from Rama? To me, to behave like Rama. To me, to behave like Krishna. To me to behave like Draupadi, to me to behave like Rukmini. That's more important Definitely. than saying whether did Rama exist. Man. Definitely. Come on. And a lot of people get stuck, unfortunately, on that aspect. Oh, yeah. no, but this is not historical. <laughs> so, Ari, but it is not historical. There's so much more that you can learn, exactly. even if it is not historical. I would say it is historical, yes. I would argue yeah. because they are. You, you have proofs. to, definitely there yeah, is. But yeah. even if you believe it is not historical, there's so much more that you can learn from it. Correct. Why give up completely on a scripture just because someone told you it is not historical? Yeah. You have not done your research, right? You ha you're not a historian, you're not an archaeologist. Just because for all these years, you know, we have been told that all these are myths. Ha. And that's where the <laughs> <laughs> word <laughs> mythology comes from. Yeah. So I think uh, it we should ourselves take that responsibility, you know, we as Indians. And I would say it does not matter what language you speak, which region you belong to. Now the scriptures are available everywhere through the click of a button. They are available in most Indian languages. I would say all Indian languages. All, all of them, yeah. And even a lot of uh, foreign languages, you know, most of the scriptures are available. So why not explore ourselves and find out things?